Welcome to Beer Mates. For the beer snobs and the beer noobs among us, we're here to celebrate beer and the good times that come with it. Through tastings, visiting breweries, and the general love for the craft. Join us as we explore this ever-expanding world of craft beer. And maybe you'll even learn something along the way. I'm Matt. And I'm Mike. And we're Beer Mates. Okay, what are we doing? What do we got? If you couldn't tell by my shirt, <laughs> we are doing pumpkin beers tonight. Pumpkin beers. I, I have a very significant memory of just a year ago doing a pumpkin beer with you. You and can see it on the table here. We have this year's version of that uh-huh, beer. That's right. Uh-huh. So, yeah, we're, we're going to start with that one, in fact. So, let's talk real quick about what pumpkin beers are. Okay. So... They, a lot of uh, breweries make pumpkin beers, but they're not really pumpkin beers. Okay. Because we have that happen with the Oktoberfest. I okay. know. I know. So what ends up happening is a lot of uh, breweries make spiced beers where they put pumpkin spices, like you would put in like a pumpkin pie or something yep. like that. And they put that in the beer, but there's actually no pumpkin in the beer. Oh, okay. So it's just a spiced beer, but they call it like a... Pu- and they're usually honest on the can. Like, it'll say a pumpkin spiced beer or gotcha. something okay. like that. So it has the name pumpkin on it, but it's kind of misleading because there's actually no pumpkin in it. Okay. So some of these are going to be like that. They're going to be spiced beers. And then we have some... some of these are going to be full-on pumpkin beers, as in it's brewed with pumpkin in it. Why would they shortchange it on the brewing it with pumpkin in it? Is there a cost thing there? Or? Uh, no, it's just all in the method of brewing because pumpkin, you have to understand, is a fruit and therefore it adds a lot of sugar. Okay. And so there's a completely different process. When you start adding things like that to mm-hmm. a beer, it's going to change significantly like how the yeast behaves. It's going to change the alcohol content. Okay. It's going to change the mouth feel of the beer. So adding pumpkin into it is actually going to give you kind of almost a smoother, creamier mouth feel. And some, you know, breweries don't want that. They want just the spicy flavor from it. Okay. And some beers want the actual, some breweries want the actual. Okay. So it's yeah. a, it's just a, it's a, um, literally just their preference for what yeah. they're trying to get. Yeah. Okay. It, whatever their, the, the flavor profile they're trying to achieve. Okay. Yep. So we are going to start with our revisit from last year. So this is <laughs> House of Torment. House of Torment. Yeah. This is a local brewery, Fourth Tap, uh, that's down here in Austin. It's one that we I tend to frequent. I get yeah. there quite a bit. They have some of my favorite beers all the time. Okay. So I get a lot of their beers. They sell them here in stores. It's the one I actually haven't been to. We got to go when it. When oh, they get it's great. Market. It's yeah. a nice little little feel. Yeah. And they do a lot of really cool flavored beers that are. Uh, unique that set them apart from what else right. the other stuff that's around there. right okay and they actually make my favorite IPA too okay so yeah so it was this that we had at the house of tournament right? yes it was yeah. just, this is this is the new year so we don't have Halloween horror nights out here because we're not in Orlando or California right but local haunted house which was actually we went last year yep was a great time we had tickets to go this year and they canceled it because of COVID yep Hence why we're in the home bar now drinking. Yeah, which I'm, I'm not right. I'm not complaining. Right. <laughs> so we didn't get to go this year, but yeah. we were going to. So uh, House of Torments, their little local haunted house that they do here, usually has like four haunted houses that are all different themed. And they put it on through the whole month, and it's it, yeah, it's one of those things. Honestly, last year, going with you was my first time going. Yeah. Uh, it was pretty good. It was it's a blast. A pretty good one. <laughs> we, had a good, we got scared. Yeah, I definitely did. Yeah, and I think one of my favorite memories is we had we hit all four haunted houses but before and after each and every one of them <laughs> we had went to the little bar that they had set up there and got one of these yep and so we would go and get one of these we went to the haunted house one and then we came back and got another one of these and went to house yep. two. so we drank a lot yeah which kind of made it a lot more fun yeah so this is fourth taps uh, pumpkin beer that they make specifically for that event and okay. even though it was canceled they still made it for that event for this year okay and so, just to kind of read for you what they say about it. So, this is an actual pumpkin beer. All right. In fact, they call it a pumpkin slash yam beer. Okay. So, it might have some yam in it as well. Interesting. Um, they say, the House of Torment Pumpkin Ale is a delicious beer inspired by the season as well as terrified hallways jam-packed with monsters. It's a refreshing only 5% ABV, which is probably why we were able to have so many during uh, the haunted houses. Yep. With 240 pounds of fresh pumpkin, 
personally roasted by our own pumpkin master, and we couldn't be more excited to collaborate with one of our favorite Austin institutions, which is the House of Torment. It's a super cool can, too. I want to show that up close. And uh, the they, they say it's full-bodied, easy on the hops, and sweet. Yeah, not super sweet, but it's like three quarters of the way over there. So, so yeah, that's what you're going to get when you get a typical pumpkin beer. Is it's going to be kind of on the sweeter end. It's going to be a little bit maybe spicier end. Yeah. You're not going to get hops now, at all. I didn't catch the ABV. Is that? 5%. 5%, 5% off. Okay, yeah, cool. 5%. Yeah. So it's a lighter one. Okay. All right. But this has, they said, roasted pumpkin actually in it. Okay. 240 pounds in a batch. I'm already excited because I remember liking it already. Yes. Yeah. All right. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you. There's some spice in there. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's All right, so just to remind everybody, we're gonna rate these. Yeah. On a scale of one to 10. Okay. So, but let's get there, your impressions first. Before yeah, we I definitely, so like you said, there's definitely some, some spice in it. I can taste the pumpkin. It's not like punch me in the face with pumpkin, but it is pumpkin, it definitely is there. It's obvious. Um, and first off, I just remember I did have probably five of these things, mm-hmm. something like that. Uh, so, and, and I kept getting the same one. So I really, really liked it. You know what the weird part is? It was only a year ago, but I, I was surprised. Like I, I was like, oh, that's, I, if I was, it's not exactly what I remembered. Now, maybe that is because it's a different batch. Yep, it's probably from year to year, batch yeah. is going to change. Yeah. That's the nice thing about little craft breweries, because even if they do a seasonal beer that they do the same thing every year, it's not going to be 100%. You yeah. Know, it's always going to have a, a Which is kind of cool. That's it is cool. cool. I, I yeah. appreciate that. It makes you want to come back and try it again. Right. You know? So, uh, just as a number, hmm, for this, you know... If you would have asked me to rate my last year bat, the, what, the experience I had with the beer that we had at the House of Torment, um, I would have had to have gone 8, 8.5 with that beer. But because I think you're factoring in the fun in the atmosphere. That's also probably that. true. Yes. That, that's probably a big part of it. So, But for, for me, for this right now, uh, as far as just drinking back, like we said, a 10 is like something you could drink a bunch of them you would have in your fridge all the time. Right. Uh, I definitely would only have this probably seasonal um, month of October, maybe uh, right around Halloween. I could see myself drinking a couple of these on Halloween. I'm going to go 6.5 or 7. Yeah, I was going to go with about a 6. Okay. And I kind of agree with you. It's not something that I'm going to seek out. It's not like pumpkin spice coffee creamer for me, which I seek out and want all year long. Yeah. This is more like, a, I'll buy a six pack every year. I'll enjoy my six pack every year, mm-hmm. but I'm probably not gonna go buy another one. Yeah, no, that's, I'm right there with you. This next one is brought to us by Tupps Brewery, which is up in McKinney, Texas, up closer to Dallas area, mm-hmm. okay? Great little brewery, I've been there as well. Okay. They have uh, a lot of really good beers. This is another one that may not be super local to us, but I seek them out in the grocery store. Okay. Like I always want to know what Tups is doing because they yeah. always come out with new stuff all I, the time. I don't know if I've ever had a Tups beer. Actually. All right. Yeah. Well, so this is full grown Jack. Right? Full grown Jack. So this is part of a series that they do called the full grown. Uh, I, I call it the full grown series because it, it varies. They have the full grown baby, they have the full grown man, the full grown bearded it's a, man, it's pretty the cool. full grown. Yeah. So every beer is different. Every beer is unique. It has something unique about it, and they put out a different one all the time. So uh-huh. it's always something unique on the shelf. Uh, this is their version of that for this season, and it's called Full Grown Jack, and it's an imperial stout. And this one says with pumpkin, pumpkin spices. spices. So like you said earlier, this one doesn't have actual pumpkin in it. This is the, right. just the spice. Right. Okay. So this one's going to be a, a different experience altogether because it is an imperial stout. Okay. All right. So a couple warnings about this one. It is 12.1 ABV. Oh. <laughs> which you can kind of see just yeah. from the color of it. Because when you get a beer this dark, that's a lot of sugar. That's a lot of malt. Yeah. That's going to inc- create gonna, a lot of That's going to pack a punch. <laughs> yeah. So I wouldn't drink a full one of these in a sitting. Uh-huh. Or it'd be your whole night would be one of them. Yeah, right. So we're doing it right. We're going to have just a little bit of sampling of it. But again, you're not looking for pumpkin flavor in this. We're okay. looking for pumpkin spice. spice. Okay. Okay. Whoa. Wow. 
Wow. Holy moly. <laughs> You know, I don't want to drink a whole one of those because of the ABV, but I would drink a whole one I of those. I would drink a whole one of those, and if you handed me a second one, I would probably drink that one as well. I really like that. You know, and sometimes when you get beers this dark and this high in alcohol, it could be a hit or miss. Yeah. Because it can be like just so punchy in the face. I see a lot of Imperial Sets that are like aged in bourbon barrels and things like that and I can't drink them. Yeah, they yeah. just are, yeah. they punch you in the face. Yeah. This doesn't do that at no, all. And it, I can get the spice right away. Yeah. You got the spice right away. But it's smooth. It, it's smooth and it's it, it it's super tasty. Mm-hmm. I mean it's really, really tasty. That's like a dessert. Yes. So, so maybe, you know, one full one at the end of you know, I just meal? I just imagine myself at Thanksgiving going Oh, yeah. I'm going to sit down and have one of these guys. Oh, yeah. You know? That, that would be what it is. Like, I don't need to have a bunch of beers. Mm-hmm. I got family over. But I'm going to nurse this one all yeah. night long. Yeah. And that would be good. Yep. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. That, I, I'm going to rate, gonna rate first? ahead of Go ahead. I would give that a 9.5. I'm and the with you. only reason I would do not a full 10 is because you can't drink it all It's because I can't drink it yeah. all the time. Yep. Yep. That's we're on the exact same page. 9.5 only because I can't drink it over and over. That. That is so good. I couldn't believe. How, I can't believe how good that. All right, so let, Spencer. All right, so this I've never had a beer from this brewery. I'll tell you what won me over on this one. It was the can. Yeah, it's a cool can. Yeah, I mean, I, I when I look at pumpkin ales, I typically, you know, judge in the book by its cover. Yeah, I'm looking for a nice can. Yeah. Um, so this one won me over in the store. So we've never had it. This is a brewery out of Spencer, Massachusetts. Hence the name Spencer Brewery. Um, it is a pumpkin slash yam beer, so there is pumpkin in it and pumpkin spices in it. It is only a 5.2 ABV. Okay. Okay. And that should be kind of obvious. Typically, cans that are served in a tall boy like this They're not are not going to be super high. Yeah. Right. right. So, let's give this one a shot. Okay. So this should be closer in line to what we had the first time. Okay. I don't know that we're going to get another one that's like this. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. Yeah, it is a little bit more. It is a lot. It is. It does have some of that similar. It's. You know what? It, it's maybe maybe because we did it this order too. Uh, it it doesn't punch you in the face at all. It's definitely a beer. If you get a sixteen ounce, you could sit at the pub and drink it just fine. Um, I could have two of them. It wouldn't yeah. hurt my feeling to have two of them. I don't love it. I don't love it either. Yeah. Um, it's not as good as this one was. Yeah, that's it's, it's yeah. closer in line with this one. Yeah, definitely. But yeah, I can. I would, this here, here's the deal: when you're buying a beer that is obviously intended to be flavored, whether it be flavored by pumpkin or by spices or whatever, you expect to be able to taste that flavor. Yeah, like I'm not going to buy an apple beer and not taste apple. Right, right. I'm not going to buy a citrusy beer and not have a citrus taste. Yeah, and yeah. if I do, I'm not going to buy it again. Not, not a. And this one, I don't taste the pumpkin i don't taste yeah, I don't, the, the spice if you put the if you blindfolded me gave me a pint of this and told me nothing about it i would think i just was i mean but it's, it's a beer yeah but that's it yeah it's not a bad beer it's not bad no but comparing it to what we're yeah what i was doing expect, tonight yeah. with pumpkin beers yeah, yeah it's not a pumpkin beer yeah uh, and this is actually gonna be my lowest rating since we started rating okay it's four Four. Four. I would. I think I would give it either a four or a three. Okay. And it's not because it's a bad beer. Yeah. See, so like, I want to reserve like a one or a two for like, oh, that's terrible. Nah. I wouldn't drink that. Not. Don't. Yeah. This isn't a bad beer. It's just I. It's not nothing to write home about. I'm not gonna yeah. buy this again. Yeah. It's yeah. Mediocre. Sorry, guys. That's. Yeah. Wish, wish, wish we could say otherwise, but it's what I feel too. Yeah. I've tried it five sips now. Don't judge your book by its cover. Yeah, I guess not. (laughs) So, our last one is a beer that you can pretty much get anywhere. If you go to a local store that sells craft beer, you're going to be able to find Dogfish Head beer. Yeah. 
Uh, they're one of the biggest craft beer brewers out there. And their pumpkin ale is one of the most popular ones that come out every year. So that's what we have here. We have their pumpkin, pumpkin, yep. no P, pump, pumpkin ale. Southern, little southern yep. draw to it. So this is, again, and I did this with the Oktoberfest too, but it's a special version only because this is last year's batch. And the label is exactly the same this year, it looks like. Okay. Um, but this is last year's batch, and I aged it for a year in my refrigerator with the Oktoberfest. Okay, you did. Okay, awesome. So when we did that with the Oktoberfest, there was a definite punch up in flavor. Uh, it was my favorite beer of that of that uh, episode, and it was yeah, it was very good. So yeah. yeah. So I'm kind of excited to see what this does. They this is a good pumpkin beer. Like if I'm going out looking for pumpkin beer and I want to be safe that I'm getting what I want. That's a good one. Okay. To go to. Now, did you say I, I, I may have missed it? Is it so? I'm seeing the alcohol seven percent, but is it spi- is it spiced or is it? So the description says a full body brown ale oh. with smooth hints of pumpkin and brown sugar. We brew our pumpkin ale with pumpkin meat, brown sugar, and spices. Mm. As the season cools, this is the perfect beer to warm up. That description has me sold. I hope it does exactly what it just described. Uh, I do too. So, like you said, seven percent ABV. So it's a little up there, mm-hmm. um, but not too bad. No, it's not any more than your average IPA kind of thing, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, we should definitely get some hints of pumpkin, uh, some hints of spices. Okay. That's a damn good beer. It is. I like it. Um, I got the hint of spice and the hint of pumpkin. We said in the, you know, in the Oktoberfest episode that uh, if it's kind of real punch you in the face with those flavors and it's probably some artificial stuff going on. Could be. Yeah. Could be. This is definitely not punch you in the face with it, but it's it, it's there. It's yeah. definitely there. Yeah. So the pumpkin, you could tell just like that first one that we know had pumpkin. Yeah. It. You can tell it's there. It's almost in the mouth feel. Mm-hmm. It's not that you can necessarily, it's not like biting into pumpkin pie. Yeah. But you can definitely kind of get that creaminess almost of yeah. like a pumpkin. Yeah. Uh, that, I, yeah. And I, I really, I like, br- and I didn't know this was classified as a brown ale or brown, not brown ale. Yeah, no, brown, yeah, brown ale. Yeah, that's what they said. Uh, uh, and I, I typically like brown ales anyway. Um, I, I, I could have a few of those and especially it was 7%. Yeah. yeah I could have two or three of them. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's an eight for me. It's an okay. eight. I, I would give it about an eight as well. What do you think? Yeah. Do you think the aging probably had any part in that? Oh yeah. Right. You aged that. So I, I, damn it. I wish that I had had the other one to compare it. And you can't remember either. Cause it, no. man, it was a year ago. You know, I don't, what I remember from it from last year, it was a good one. I don't know because this is kind of a go-to pumpkin ale for me. They are pretty consistent with their flavors because they're so big, so they're trying to go for that consistency. Yeah. And do you remember being kind of like, oh, this is great? Or, I, I remember it, it like, being pretty similar to this. The okay. spice is strong on this one. More yeah, so it than is. This one. It is, yeah. Um, it's almost like a tingle on your tongue mm-hmm. spiciness. Exactly. And that may have enhanced with the aging, but if it did, it wasn't by much. Okay. Because I remember it being spicy. Like yeah. That last year too. Yeah. Now, I mean, obviously, if you're not in the mood for something pumpkin-y, then you, this is not your beer. But if you want a pumpkin flavor, you're gonna, you're really gonna taste it. It's not. Again, it's not gonna knock you. You know. Yeah. Next week with it, but it, it's there, and so it's. But like I said, if I'm out looking for a pumpkin ale, that's that's a good one. What did you rate that? I, I gave that an eight. I would give it about a seven. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So here's my thing. If I'm looking for a pumpkin ale, mm-hmm. I think these are the winners right here. And these right two here. right here. Yeah. Yep. Number one, the fourth tap. They did an excellent yeah. job on theirs. A little bit less punchy in the face with the spices, but again, that could have been due to the aging. Yeah. You know, but this one is a solid pumpkin ale. It has that spiciness, has that creaminess. From yeah. The pumpkin. Yeah. Definitely very good. This one is by far my least favorite. Yeah, yeah, easy. easy. I, I don't even, I, I would hesitate to even call that a pumpkin ale. But honestly, I hesitate to call this a pumpkin ale too. Yeah. And it's just a really damn good spicy beer. Yeah. And while these two are my highest rated in regards to it being pumpkin, this is by far the best beer. Okay, on. we're on the same page. Far and away the best. Cheers to that. 
If you liked that, be sure to like and subscribe. And if you really, really liked it, hit the bell. And always remember to drink responsibly. Cheers. Cheers.